Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is the Be Better Golf Show. It is a live broadcast on YouTube, so go to youtube.com slash Be Better Golf Show. And every Wednesday night, uh, during the major championship season, and this year we'll probably run through the Olympics in the Ryder Cup. Is the Ryder Cup this year? Hazeltine. Oh, yeah, so we'll go through that. And then, uh, and then we'll see from that point. With me today is Monty Scheinblum. He is a coach to great golfers on the PGA Tour, other tours, and also a very good coach of amateurs, like myself, I'm an amateur golfer. My name is Brendan DeVore. I'm the host of this show and uh, run this channel. Monty, uh, there was a video. Um, did you see the video? Did anybody out there, let me know in the comments below or on the thing, if anybody saw the video of Steve Stricker giving, getting a lesson, a chipping lesson from Phil Mickelson. So d did you see that? I, one? I did not see that. Well, I'll describe it to you and to anybody else who didn't see it. Um, basically, they're getting ready for, uh, they're at the British Open site. Troon, is it? Yeah, I think so. They're at the British Open site and uh, Steve Stricker is hitting chips over a bunker to a short-sided pin, right? So it's like, you would think like a perfect flop shot situation. So Steve is, is doing his normal motion, you know, which is just beautiful. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that pitching motion is awesome. But like, it's funny to see these two guys because you would think the action of the two of them is so different. And I think Steve had asked Phil for flop shot advice, but instead, uh, Phil Mickelson was telling Steve Stricker, um, there's a way to do it without having to flop it, you know, this short-sided chip. And he was just, um, the video is only like 20 seconds long, but the audio was crystal clear. And man, I would just love to get uh, is it, a little more insight to that. Is it the, it, there's, there's one of the, I, I've been teaching this to, uh, to better players uh, re recently. Um, where, where you preset the right wrist angle like this? Is, is that the way it was? You know, he was having him, uh, it was definitely not a hinge and hold, I'll tell you that much, but, but he was having him uh, be extremely shallow into it with the face only slightly open, and it just looked like he was returning it to, to yeah, he was kind of setting which is the angle. Which is essentially, and, yeah. And I mean, returning it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. just, you know, that's what, what I've been teaching, yeah. Right, and he was getting all the grooves on the ball, and there were little, they're, they're about this high, you know, not the, the Mickelson sure, flop. Sure. They're about this high and they were landing and then stopping. It was really cool. See, I mean, this, this is the, pretty much the method that I teach. And this is why I, I'm a proponent of it. Is obviously these guys are probably, you know, if they're not the two best short gamers of this generation. You wouldn't want to learn from anybody else. They're, they're two of the top five. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're two of the top five. And it just shows you that with all the fancy schmancy things that both of them can do, they're both in there trying to make every shot as basic as possible. Yeah. That's the, you know, I haven't seen the video, so I'm going by your description, yes. but it sounds to me like Phil was like, look, you're good. Yeah. Ma still make it as basic as possible. Yeah. And this is my philosophy on the short game, is, you know, the way that I teach it, that shot can pretty much be performed anywhere around the green in the rough out of the bunker with essentially the same generic move little bit of change in setup little bit of change in club selection to create you know more running but i like to teach one simple way Most of doing yeah. it and it sounds like that that's what phil and 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 um, um steve were talking about is m the more basic shot and kind of tweaking it slightly to you know hit the flop shot instead of the the high risk open the face you know take right, mean cut right. at it shot yeah. i mean at whatever 47 years old or whatever steve is for him to be such no, a great governor and try no, to no, develop a no flop he's shot he's he's number. 40 he's the same age i am he's okay. 49. Oh, okay so for him to try to de develop you know some crazy flop shot is like see but why here's yeah. here's my opinion is is you know a guy that's been that good for that long you know, yeah. like you said, at trying to do something off his comfort zone this late in the game mm. at a tournament of that significance, I think Phil, you know, kind of did him a real service of saying, look, just kind of do what you know and here's a little tweak to make it better. So the British Open is coming up this week and uh, normally, not always, but no normally it's played in uh, some crazy weather. Uh, you've played over there some at a lot of the it's, 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 yeah, I, yeah, last year I got a chance to go over there. I didn't play Troon or Muirfield, which are yeah. the two, but I played uh, the old course at St. Andrews, 
Royal Liverpool, Royal Lytham, and Carnoustie. So yeah. basically four of, uh -huh. you know, four of the ones that are, that are, that are in the rotation and quite a bit. And um, I, I explained this uh, on my blog, it, it was pretty funny. The day we were playing the old course at St. Andrews, nine and 10 are both 315 yard par fours. Okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. And the wind was, it was into the wind on nine and downwind on 10. The holes are the identical distance on the scorecard. Nine going into the wind, I hit driver nine iron. Well, driver nine iron, I mean, I'm good for, you know, 450 to 480. Yeah, right. Okay, right. 315 yard hole. Yeah. Downwind, I hit three wood like 870, 80 yards over the green. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, that yeah. tells you how hard the wind blows there. Gosh. And other than obviously just playing in it and having the experience of it, uh, when, when you're playing in, like, when the weather starts getting crazy, how do you start to adjust your, what do you, do, what do you have to adjust it when it really starts getting I, windy? I, I stop, I, I cut my club head speed way down. Okay. Like, I don't take out driver and, you know, play it back in my stance and try to steepen the attack to bring it in lower. Yeah. I just, I swing it. See, if, if you, I mean, keeping the ball out of the wind is all about managing, it's more about managing your spin than your trajectory, really. Mm. So, like, you know, into the wind on a, on a 170-yard you know, par three, I hit four iron, which is my 215, 220 club, and just kind of went, you know, yeah. and I hit it below the hole, and, you know, when you don't put that much spin on it, the wind doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. So that's why that... The, the, the common way of bringing the ball down. Oh, play it back in your stance and get really steep on it. Yeah. But you know, that doesn't do you any good if you hit it low when you're spinning the ball too much because then it just goes like that. So the best way, and, and it works downwind too. Yeah. You know, you hit a ball up in the air with a whole ton of spin on it. Mm. Sometimes the ball, I mean, you can have a ball that stays up in the wind forever and goes a mile, yeah. or the wind will actually knock it out of the air. Yeah, I've seen that. Sometimes you're, you're thinking, oh, this is really helping, and it just never gets up, and it, and it, it ends up being short. Yeah. It's very strange. So to me, when the wind is blowing that hard, you should be going up two, even three clubs, and just, you know, normal stance, normal swing, and just, you know, hitting it at, you know, 65 or 70 percent and that will automatically make it go lower with less spin without a change in swing. Cool, let's do a thing real quick, Monty. Uh, you're always talking, you always hear about uh, knockdown shots. Yes. You know, when, you, when you're watching these tournaments, even in uh, normal tournaments, when weather's perfect, right. the guys will hit them. So I'm gonna try to hit one now, and I want you to put some ideas in my head of what might be a good thought to, to think about. Here, I, what do you got there? Five? It, it's, hit seven. Okay. Okay. All right. So, you know, let's say, let's say you've got, so how far do you hit that seven normally? Uh, just this, like 163? 163. Okay, I make fun of people that don't, that have yardages that don't end in zero or five. Okay, 160? Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. No, you hit it a little further than that. I'd say you're up to 170 now. Okay. But, but anyways, so let's say you've got, you know, 150 yards, mm -hmm. okay? The standard person would say, okay, it's 150 yards, I'm gonna take out one extra club, try and flight it, yeah. and they end up hitting it full, mm -hmm. get too much, get too steep, put too much spin on it. I'm saying, hit that seven, try to hit it 150 yards, okay. and it will come out lower with less spin, and it will in fact go 150 yards into the wind, because the wind's not gonna take that much off of it because it's lower with less spin. Okay, so you're saying, so I'm saying it's 140 yards, n not like all together, net. And I want to hit, but I do want to hit it kind of a, a knockdown. Right. So instead of hitting pitching wedge or nine, I'm going to hit this seven. And just go here to here. Yeah. And don't, it's not, it's not full from here to here. Like you're not putting 100%, yeah. you're putting like 70, 80% speed from here to here. And you're trying to hit your 170 okay. yard club, 140, 150. The, the issue I have with, with this sometimes is that it's very hard for me to control the face and control my swing at less than full, you know? That's because your like back you swing's to be a too really long. Good player to That's do because, that. no, that, okay. is, that is totally untrue. Okay. It's when, pe when amateur golfers at all skill levels have contro trouble controlling the face and the launch direction, 
90 yeah. percent there's two two issues mm -hmm. issue number one is the swing is too long and then they're actually slowing down to get it to go shorter yeah or they're they don't the shorter backswing kind of throws them off they get out of sequence they fire the body too much gotcha. we know about that one okay so if you simplify it and just feel very armsy with the swing and just go from here to here with the left arm. Okay. Effort level is relaxed, not, not insane, but it's, it's basically normal? Yeah. Okay. Don't try to hit it low. Don't try to flight it. Okay. The lack of spin and the shorter swing will bring down the ball by itself. All right, 140 yards, 700. See? It's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, and then so as far as like accounting for roll and stuff like that, when you have a big club, you don't you, you don't even have to worry too much. No, okay. I mean, you know, it's so negligible that especially if you're going into the wind, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not going to go very far. So same thing. We're in a more, more extreme situation now. I wanna, only want to hit this 110. Okay. So I'm just going to feel a little shorter parallel, maybe. Which in reality will be about three quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've experienced that yes. before. Okay, now that's okay. You made that mistake a little bit on okay. the first one, okay. and you made it big time on that one. Okay, tell me. You, whether it was conscious or subconscious, there was an effort yeah, to hit that low. It was. Yeah, yeah. The shorter swing, the less speed creates less trajectory, less spin. You don't have to flight it when you're hitting it easier. You're absolutely right. I was here and then I tried to hit it low by going like this. Absolutely, like, yeah. and you got, st and here's the irony, yeah. is when you do that, you actually get steep, put, you know, poor spin numbers, poor compression numbers on it. The wind just goes, slaps it out of the air. Yeah. You know? All right, so do, same, same thing. Don't try and flight it, yeah. just hit. Just hit it. That was so good. See, that was so much better. And what I tell people to do. You're absolutely right. The first one, I was trying to hit trying it down. To hit I was down. trying to be like a Lee Trevino kind okay. of knockdown. And here's what I tell people to do. This is not only good to learn these shots. This is good to learn your sequencing. Yes. Play the ball way forward. Oh, the really? opposite of what you're thinking. Yes. Okay? Play the ball way forward. Fight the urge to get forward and hit down on it. Mm -hmm. Stay back and just get forward with the arms and hands. That was great. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that ball came out a little bit higher, but it wasn't a high spin shot. So even though the trajectories were a little higher, you're not gonna get slapped out of the air by the wind. That one, guys, the ball was about, about here. Yeah, about a driver ball yeah, position. About and uh, so if I was trying to play it low, that's more of a thing for the driving range. I wouldn't play it that far forward. Why not? Okay. It goes left when I do that sometimes. So in my mind, I'm thinking of this closing door thing. And okay. by the time it gets that far forward, it's the door's that, shutting. It goes left because you're more forward on the arc. And the arc is already pointing left when yes. the ball's that far yeah. forward. Okay. So you to don't for that. You, you don't you don't try to fix anything. You set up at the right edge of the green for a left pin. Gotcha. Let's do that. I like stuff like this, not to interrupt myself, but I like stuff like this because this is golfing. This is the kind of thing that's not so much positions see, and stuff see, like this. See, this is the stuff you have to figure see, out. See, this is big for me because yeah. back in the day when I was trying to become a tour player, yeah. nobody told me this. And I did the, okay, I've got, okay, so I've got 150. 150 is normally pitching wedge slash nine iron. I've got 150 into the wind. I'm gonna go up one club and I'm gonna play it back in my stance and I'm gonna smash down on this thing yeah. and bring it in really, really low. Yeah. And I would just disperse that ball. I mean, the wind would catch it and just blow it everywhere. Right, right. So when the wind blew, I, I had trouble. Whereas when the, I, I want the wind to blow 50 now because I can control my ball flight now. And there are a lot of other guys will be knocked out, not only uh, because of their swing ideas, but mentally they'll just give yeah. up a little bit. You have to abandon some of these Long held, oh, you got to play it back to bring the ball down. You All know? right, so this ball is uh, well forward in my stance. Yeah, driver ball position. Driver ball position. This is a seven iron, then I'm going to hit 120 yards. And I'm aiming at the right-hand side of the green. 
Really good contact. I did come over it. I don't know. No, I always say that when it goes left, I came over it. I don't. Well, the I, it went for, left. Anyway. For you to hit it 120 yards, the swing yeah. was too long. Ah. Okay. I felt and, that. And, and yeah. what happens is, is when the swing is long and you think 120 yards from here, you're slowing down too much. Okay. Okay. Let's reorganize that. 120 yards. 120. That was a lot better. See, there you go. Now, because the ball is so far forward, yeah. you are in fact aimed left. Your your club path is aimed left, even if you're swinging down the line, because the ball right. is so far forward. The club's going like this. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Right, right. Yeah. So, th and and that's why playing it back is so bad, because when you play the ball that far back, you're really really inclined to hit a ball that curves a lot right to left. Mm -hmm. Now if you want to extremely play it low, do you then start moving it back? You never really move it to like... I don't like to, but there are instances where, where I do. Especially if I want to hit like... Or... Especially if I want to hit a low hook. Oh, okay? because that's coming from the inside of this. Area, okay, so. or there's that situation where, okay, everybody's had these. We've got like a limb right in front of you, and then you got to go under it, but then like 60, 80, 100 yards away, there's some trees that you want to go over. So, yeah. if, so if you're, if you're, this is not yeah. a, a, a high skill level shot. That's when you want to play it back. Then you slam down on it. You get the thing to go low and under yeah. the tree. Then the wind gets it and brings it up in the air. I get, I tell you what, 10, 15 handicaps can play that shot. Oh yeah. They, they just got to go out there and hit it four or five times and go, oh. You know, this is where I want to do the karate chop move and and get the low. That's a great point, because um, when I started and when everybody starts, it seems you have a monster slice. Right. You don't want to totally eliminate that from your memory banks, because you're going to need that at some at point. some point. Yeah. It's like, oh, I remember what I used to do when I was right. hacking. Right. But no, yeah. but like these little yeah. shots that we're learning here, you don't have to be. I mean, I get 18, and here's the irony, I get yeah. 18 handicaps doing this, and then they're like, you know, this feels really, really good, and I'm hitting this as far as, or farther than I normally hit it. Should I start swinging this way normally? And I'm, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. All right, last one, 130. Aim right there. There we go, Monty. I hit that about 150, but uh, yeah, but that was a good, that cares? was a good yeah, one. That was a great one. You know, and and what it does is, is it not only teaches you to see. I tell this to people, and they kind of scratch their head when I first say it, but then they're like, you know what? That makes some sense. If you buy into the fact that more club head speed comes from better arm speed, okay. If yeah. you don't buy that, then who cares, right? right. No, nobody. This isn't. Gonna, but if you can learn to control your arm speed by, by not accelerating them so much, you gain control of that arm speed. So by definition, you have control of your arm speed and you can speed it up and hit it farther. Okay, cool. Uh, Monty, I was reading uh, questions just then, and uh, as I do sometimes, I didn't really hear what you said. That's all right. Because what you say about, and I know I really want to hear it, because <laughs> what you say about arm speed, I think, is really this, almost the secret sauce. Okay, to, no, to no, go. you know, yeah. I, I think it's starting to be established that, yeah. you know, arm speed is where club head speed comes yep. from, okay? Yep. You know, if you want to keep your head in the sand, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you, but, you know, the data is starting to show that arm speed is where club head speed comes from. So if you learn to control your arm speed yeah. on these little shots, mm -hmm. even though it's slowing it down, yeah. then by definition you have control of your arm speed and you can speed them up if you have control. Yep. So if you learn to slow them down, then you know you can speed them up. Yeah, because when, when we were first talking about this topic as far as uh, swinging slower and still keeping control, I remember seeing Tiger Woods on the range in 2007 or something when he was still at uh, Sher uh, Sherwood Forest. Yeah, Sherwood, Sherwood Country Club. Sherwood Country Club. Yeah. Uh, so we were still uh, doing his event there. He had a drill that he did where he took seven irons and he hit it everywhere from 30 yards to 210 yards with the same length swing all the way to here and through to 30 yards and then, you know, 100 yards. Yep. 
you know, 70 yards. He was yards. learning to control his arm speed. But man, he could he could hit it, and each time was just flush with this nice little divot or skid or whatever. And uh, so I tried to do that. I said, okay, this is my seven iron, and I'm, I only want to hit this 150. And I'd, I'd go all the way like he would, and i try to slow through it. That's a high level shot to be able to do. Well, okay. What I'm saying is what you're saying with just the shorter swing to it's, do okay. it's much easier. You know, it's really, it's pretty stupid of me to criticize the greatest player of this generation. You know, but that may have worked for him, yeah. but that's not the right way to do it for most golfers. No, I watched that on, the, I watched him do it on the range and then I tried to do it on the range and I was like, this is way above what I can right. do. That is like See, this is, serious body control. This is where you have to, you know, most of the time, you have to put aside what tour players do. Yep, yep. You know, that, that, you know, trying to copy what a tour player does in his swing, in his routine, it would seem like that would be the, the, the operative thing to do, but you know, you don't you don't have a teenager of 16 years old watch the Indy 500. You send them to driver's ed. Right. You know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, going into questions now, guys. I'm about to walk off camera and, and check out some questions. So, put them in. We're gonna do. A... I know. I'm sorry. They they did put music here at this range. So, somebody said the old Navy next door has loud music. <laughs> it's probably the same station. Mm. They can hear the music on the. Uh, yeah, but. I mean, I, mean, I can barely hear can. it over I here. I know. I guess they can. Uh, sorry, sorry, Robert. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Somebody's right in. Okay, guys, we're doing Be Better Golf Live. This is a, a live golf talk show here on YouTube, and then it's also rebroadcasted uh, in perpetuity on Be Better Golf Live. Ooh, good word. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Working on that. Um, somebody's having the issue, and I don't, I don't have this problem, but I see golfers with this. Uh, somebody's having the issue of when they make a backswing, the head goes out this way. Correct. And towards the ball again. Yes. Okay, there's yeah. two different causes of this. Okay. One, and sometimes it's both. And you know, nothing is ever absolute in golf, but 90% of the people are making one or both of these mistakes. Number one is they're sucking their arms too far inside. Okay, and, uh, that, and just, yeah, and, see the and reaction. And that, that, will, that will pull the head out. Mm -hmm. Number two, is they're not extending properly at the waist and hips. Okay, tell me about that. Okay, so when you make a backswing, there's three different moves involved in, in, in you know, in the torso. Okay. There's three different moves. So you're you're in forward bend. Uh huh. Okay. Forward bend. So if gotcha. if if we get rid of the forward bend and we just go up here, uh -huh. there's only two movements in the backswing, which is rotation and side bend. Right. Okay. In a backswing. You replace forward bend mm -hmm. with side bend. Yeah. Okay. You shift from forward bend to side bend. Right. Yeah. So when you go from forward bend to here, that's called extending yep. in this spot. If you're not extending enough and all you're doing is maintaining the forward bend and side bending as well, it ends up head at the ball. So this is what that would look like. So I'm in forward bend. And as I rotate and side bend, you keep I don't, the same amount of forward bend and you add side bend. Then you go going, down. Right. Okay. And, and, and that will also pull your head this way as well. Oh, you know. Yeah. People who go like this also go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's going to be, so there's going to be, not only is it going to be toward the ball, there's going to be some of this as well. So what that is, is, so we look at this. So forward bend, side bend. Okay, yeah. so now your head's out too much toward the ball and it's too much this way. You add a little bit of extension in there, then you're in the proper place. So then obviously the opposite problem would be is people that don't side bend enough yeah. and they do this. That's yeah. the opposite problem is the people that stand yeah. up in their backswings. Yeah. 
they are extending properly, but they're not side bending enough. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, so to to you know, after all that, you know, two minutes of me babbling on about side bend no, and left tilt. Yeah. Okay. The people whose heads go down too much don't lose their forward bend enough, mm -hmm. and the people that stand up don't side bend toward the ball enough. Right. So for for our viewer. He's got to extend a little bit more. Just a little, a little bit. bit more of this action in the backswing. And and you'll know you're yeah. doing it right when you feel like you went like this and you look at the video and your head stays perfectly in the same right. place. Great point. Get your your phone out and and do some extreme feels. You, you need, you need yep. to have a camera when you're working on this because one of two things is going to happen. You're going to think you're doing it and you're doing nothing. Yeah or you're trying to do it too much and you end up overdoing it and being a, you, you need to have supervision whether it's somebody looking at you or or the camera so you can see it for yourself cool all right let's do uh well, let's do one more Yeah, sorry about the feed, guys. I think uh, the, we're set kind of far away from the Wi-Fi tonight. Okay, simple, uh, simple question with kind of a... Uh... There are no simple questions in golf. <laughs> right. Well, it's a short question, <laughs> uh, but with, uh, it's, it's something that a lot of people are, are looking for. Okay, so somebody says, how can I get my drives to start drawing left instead of fading right. Especially, there's a very big stigma in golf when you go out there and it fades to the right. Especially, you know, when you're first starting, you're like, oh, I desperately want that draw shot that the Okay, that first the, off, the let me, let me, can do. Let, let, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do my five second rant on, if you're a good golfer and you hit a fade, fades don't go shorter than draws, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Slices go shorter than hooks, Yeah. But fades don't go, a properly hit fade, and, and if it, and you know, I'm sure there's somebody out there, I've got math that shows differently. Yeah, on a 300 yard drive, it goes like eight tenths of a yard shorter, yeah, you right, know, right. all things being equal. But, yes, if you've got, generally speaking, okay, let's eliminate the high handicap over the top 50 yard slicer, okay? The guy that has a pretty good golf swing and the ball just, will fuse to turn over and yep. it's just weak and to the right. Yeah. There's two issues, sometimes both. Heel shots. Okay. Oh, where he's hitting it on the face of the club, yeah. In theory, perfect, zero path, zero face angle. Oh, you know what, he asked for a draw. Three degrees right, mm -hmm. path. One and a half degrees face left of path, theoretically produces a nice little draw. Yeah. If you make that swing and hit it in the heel, the ball's likely to cut. So you can make a perfect swing. You can hit, make the perfect it. baby yeah. five yard baby draw swing. If you hit it in the heel, the ball's likely to cut. All right, so the first thing, get some foot powder or whatever and see where you're hitting the ball in the face. Once you've got it coming out of the center of the face, if it's still doing that, then. Okay, the biggest commonality among decent to good golfers that are hitting fades that either draw their irons or whatever is, you know, they're just getting the shaft a little too vertical right yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Whenever the shaft is vertical here, it's really, really hard to hit a draw. Yeah. You're generally gonna get a straight ball, kind of a little bit of a push cut or a snap hook, yeah. okay? So if you're, if you're wanting to get that ball to draw with essentially the same golf swing, you've gotta get the shit, my issue. So I'm familiar with this one. Yeah. When, when I get my shaft working too much this way, I start to go like that, I get this ball flight. Kind of a ball that starts right, or even a block, and then it cuts more. Yeah. Whereas, when I get the shaft working this way, that's when I get those nice little, you know, straight balls or five yard draws that, that go a ton. Cool. All right guys, so uh, I don't think our bit rate is very good right now. It's a uh... It's reading for me the little technical talk at, at about like 100 or 110, which is not very good. I think we're kind of far from the shop tonight, just where the range is set. But I'm uh, gonna do some. Uh, 
figure some things out for because you know, we're, we're doing this again in I think two weeks so I'm gonna figure some things out before that anyway so uh, a little bit of a but I, what I want to tell you is that this show and every time we do these live shows tune in in the next few days uh, they start coming up in pieces you know as the, the different questions sometimes I'll upload the entire thing and sometimes I'll upload the, the different topics individually but you'll be able to see this this feed here in crystal clear HD in a, a few days. So let's do uh, one more before I want to do some, some, uh, something else. Oh, we have, actually, as I said, we get a good rate. Okay. Okay, great question. Um, let me give uh, props to the person who asked it. Okay. All right, Chase Ross has a great question, Monty. Um, his question is, and you see that uh, you see a lot of videos on YouTube, uh, gosh, a lot, with the golf swing where they boil down one thing and and they're saying like uh, they they think they've found this singularity in all great golfers. You know, look at this. And one of these one of those videos uh, that I saw was uh, the relation of power to a, str a very bent right arm at impact. You know. So you see John Daly at impacts like this, and Dustin Johnson is at like this, and a bunch of other guys with this bent right arm. This one guy is trying to achieve that bent right arm and impact, uh, but every time he does it, it's, it's ruining his swing. So Okay, I was, you know. for those of you that never watched The King of Queens, uh, might not get this. Yeah. For those of you that have watched The King of Queens, will know exactly what I'm talking about when my response to that is this. Yeah. Okay. I watched that. You, you, you knew that was coming, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Okay. How much your right elbow is bent at impact is very, very dependent on two things. The first one more important than the second. The first one is your build. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, good point. Your build. I have a high waist uh -huh. and I have arms, a swing span that's shorter yeah. than my height. Yeah. I would hit the ball about 220 if I had a, bite, a bent right elbow at impact with my driver yeah. and I'd hurt myself. Yeah. I have to have so much side bend to keep that right elbow bent. Hogan, this is where, it all, where it's supposed to be. So Hogan has this. Look. Hogan was five foot six with a six foot wingspan. If his right arm straightened on his driver, he'd have stuck the club in the ground. So just standing there, I have to look at pictures. I don't like his 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 arms would be like almost down to his knees. Then. Well, you know, all I know is 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 you know I'm going by what Ken Venturi told me. Yeah. Ken Venturi, you know, I spent an entire day with him. Uh, doing an infomercial about 25 years ago yeah. and he told me everything everything that I spout about Hogan you know if you say Monty you're wrong you're an idiot that's not a fact that's your opinion blame it on Ken Venturi because everything I got from Hogan is from him pretty good source kidding yeah. as, kidding aside the joke that he made was um, Ben's arms were so long he could tie his shoes without bending over Okay? Yeah. So, there is some truth. You don't want to be just like extending the right arm. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, watch the Remax. Yeah. Okay? You will see pretty much nobody with a bent right arm at impact. Okay. Now, you don't want that sucker straightening back here. Mm -hmm. But in most long hitters, okay, John Daly and Dustin Johnson notwithstanding, you know, Phil is one. Um, Gary Woodland has a bent right elbow mm -hmm. at impact. But Phil is one of the ones, you know, he hits it pretty far. Um, but you watch the Remax, bent, 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 extend. Yep. Okay? And uh, quite honestly, for most people, there are always exceptions, for most people, trying to bend the right arm at impact is actually going to slow them down. Yeah. Definitely a moral of the story. Like, uh, this guy, um, My Swing Evolution, did a video. He tied a, a uh, his karate belt around himself and had this here because keep looking at pictures of Hogan with this, you know, and he's trying to hit shots like that. It's these little parts you don't really want to chase. It's it's yeah. it's 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 everything in the golf swing. You, you can't chase still photos of player X. Right. Okay. These things are all going to be. If you're supposed to have a bent right elbow at impact, you will. Okay. 
If you're not, you can't just throw it in there. Because aside from results out there, if you, if you try to, like, like let's say, let's hypothetical, I'm six foot two, I have a six foot wingspan. Mm -hmm. I can get a bent right elbow at impact on a driver, okay? The fact that it doesn't go as far, let's put that aside, let's say it went farther. Yeah. The amount of bent right side bend that I would have to have to get in that position because of how high waisted and how short armed I am, and I have a really short upper arm which makes it even more difficult. Yeah. I would literally, within two weeks of practice, I, I'd, I'd be done because my ba I'd, be I'd take, tear my back yeah. up. All right, so uh, if someone, though, is coming to you and they just really feel like they're getting this kind of look too much, it's, it's probably more of a sequencing issue than... It's not, pro it is. It is, yeah, yeah. It is. If they're feeling an impact, they're literally like this and they just want to get their swing a little bit more, you know, and matched up with their body. Yeah. Could be set up, could be length of, and now, now if you handed me a golf club yeah. that was li like a five iron, yeah. that was like three inches over standard, yeah, I'd have, I'd, have yeah, a bent, right. I'd have a bent right elbow. So it's equipment related as well. Yeah. But some people, you, you could go on the tour, there, there are lots of guys that don't have bent right elbows. Um, I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Because yeah. I, I would say four names and one of them, yeah, right. someone would find a video like this. See, Monty doesn't know. No, yeah, right. I'm kidding aside. Yeah. But no, you, you can't, the, the more, like Brendan said, the moral of the story is you don't change position, chase positions or angles, yeah. lag, mm -hmm. shaft lean, yeah. bent right elbow. The only thing you can chase is set up, backswing, proper transition. All right, cool. Uh, for this final final part of the video, we're going to do a little thing that I've prepared. Uh, let me get some teas. All right, so if you guys, uh, what this what this video about right now is uh, Monty, um, the driver. So let me take my driver out. I got a new one, by the way, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, courtesy of Callaway, I got this new driver. Nice. So uh, they sent this to me. It's pretty neat. Um, so so when you when you're uh, playing tournament golf and uh, you have your normal driver swing. Let's start with that. So, so I'm gonna wanna try to break this video up into two parts. So your normal driver swing, and then the driver that you hit when you're under a lot of pressure. Okay. Now, I'm assuming that they're different, but they might not be. Okay, yeah. here's the deal, is the, <laughs> this is one of my seven, this is rant number 438. That, okay. You know, I saw some people on some of the videos like, Monty gets all fired up. It's just golf. Yeah. No, but somebody said Monty seems like an angry guy. I was, you know that, that I, Dustin Johnson week. It, it oh, was I was election. I was so mad about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I, I'm really I'm really not that angry. No. What, what what makes me angry is is when I see these things that are just completely and totally wrong, and just total misnomers, and I just see golfers ruining their good time over that. That's true. This yeah, is the, the fun is this over. is yeah. this is what bothers me. Okay. So this whole idea that, that tour players just make an 80% swing and then they have 20% in reserve, yeah. it's ridiculous. Okay. Th th it doesn't exist. Okay. If you go to PGATour.com, there's the evidence, okay? Is you'll see, if you look at their highest club head speed of the year and okay. their lowest club head speed of the year, yeah. for most of them it's about a 5% difference. So let's say I, I'm just making numbers. Let's let's say Joe Blow, his his normal club head speed is 120, and then his highest of the year is 124. Or something. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, so if, if let's use Joe, Joe Blow 120 club head speed. Yeah. That guy, his highest club head speed of the year was 123, and his lowest is like 118. All right. You know. So that means they're swinging at 96 to 97 percent. Correct. Normal, Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have, I have two golf swings. I have a full golf swing where I'm trying to hit the driver pretty, pretty, pretty much almost as hard as I can. Yeah. And then the one where either I'm angry or I'm trying to drive a 350 yard hole. Okay. Where you know it is, it's all I got. And because, Monty, you're so long with your driver that when a hole really demands accuracy, you're just not using driver? You okay. don't really have a fairway I, I, finder I, driver I, I, shot? I don't believe in that. Okay. Because it's been proven almost universally that 
the fairway finding swing generally goes more crooked. Okay. Because it, for lack of a better way of putting it, it turns into a steer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I have two different. You see, you see the same thing with putting. You start deselling, the face is going all over the place. Yeah. You start getting that shorter backswing with a little more zip. Right. Right. Um, I have two things. I'm not very good with a three wood, so if I need a fairway finder, it's not the three wood. That's yeah. the worst club in my bag. Okay. Um, I'll hit. I'll hit a two iron, which I hit. You know, I've got that driving two iron, mm -hmm. which I can hit 250 to 260, so that's fine. Yeah. But if I need to hit a driver, and it's, okay. you know, it's a super long par four, it's into the wind, you, the way you do the fairway finding move is basically you do something to counteract your miss. You, you don't steer it or slow it down or cut the swing off. So if you've been blocking it that day. Okay, or... so my, generally my miss is I get a little steep, I stand the handle up, I hit it off the heel with an open club face and I hit it out yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. So if I must hit driver, two iron's not gonna cut it and I absolutely have to just like, I will purposely kind of smoke it off the toe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it would be the same for someone who has trouble with the hooks mm -hmm. when they get a little nervous, put that sucker, I mean smoke that sucker in the heel, you know. Um, to me... You're assuming that I know where where the ball is going to go based on like I don't know that the, like tell tell me that is what I'm asking. So out, out of the heel we'll do, we'll have a, a tendency to do what more? Uh, out of the heel we'll have a tendency to cut and go way right. Okay. If if you're and out of the toe, toe we'll, we'll have a tendency to snap hook. Why is that? Is this moving gear effect, faster? Gear effect. Okay. Okay. It's like you've played pool before. Mm -hmm. You hit you hit the object ball with left English and the yep. object ball has right English. Yeah. It's the same thing. So, I mean, all things being equal. Okay, so let's imagine, I'm just thinking, I'm just hearing this first time. So let's imagine this is a uh, cue ball, and this is our, uh, what we're gonna, this is the cue. And uh, so if we hit it, yeah, on this side of the cue ball, yeah, it's gonna, gonna get, go like this. You're gonna go like that. Yeah, hit it on this side, it's gonna go like that. Correct, okay, cool. correct. So my, my miss is a big heel block. Mm -hmm. So I can minimize that a little bit by hitting it off the toe. And generally speaking, if I'm trying to hit it off the toe, I don't do this as much. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. So yeah. the opposite would be true of a guy who's like coming in like this and rolling it and hitting a big snap yeah, hook. Right. He tries to hit it in the heel. Right. He's kind of swinging the heel, you know, into the ball a little bit. The face is, the toe's really not gonna roll over. And essentially, what, what I'm describing here is the whole theory behind those tailor-made drivers of moving the weight. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it, that kind of yep. does that automatically. Mm -hmm. What I really like about this philosophy of using uh, position on the club face to, to manage, to be your fairway finder, is that mentally it focuses your brain on, okay, not just let me just make this swing or this move, now your mind is in your club head, where am right. I gonna put this on the face, which right. is in the top two of most important things right, you can right. do. Right, yeah. and, and, and you know, so like, if you're trying to protect against a block by going, okay, I'm gonna try to roll that face a little more, yeah. or you know, if you're protecting the hook by like holding it open, yeah. you know, you're actually making your problem worse. Yep. Where, whereas, if you're focusing, like you said, on the face contact, it kind of frees your brain up a little to just swing the golf club. Okay, I will, uh, every once in a blue moon, hook it. So right now I'm gonna hit this fairway finding shot out of the heel. You know, the whole point of this discussion is, is that just swing easy steer ball, people, it'll work once and they think it's like, oh, this is the, you yeah. know, the, the miracle, uh -huh. yeah. and then it never works again, you know? And like we were saying before we went on air, uh, it's an equipment issue too. It seemed like with the old steel shafted drivers, smaller heads, you could kind of hit a lower one that just stayed straighter. You know, even with that in hindsight, I wish I would have known some of these things. Okay. I yeah. would have, I would have still just smashed it and tried to hit it off the toe. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to put my mind in this club head a little bit, and I'm going to. And don't try to change the setup. 
Don't change anything except for just a little kind of minor intent to okay. hit it in the heel. And uh, as far as like where I'm putting now, I don't want to go like no, that. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. I'm still, I'm still do putting it right out of the Do middle. your normal, yeah. you're under pressure. You want your normal routine oh, as much me. as you can. Excuse me, guys. Okay, let's do this. 18th hole here. Oh, that's exactly what we wanted. Yep. A little fade down the middle. Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, it, the, as soon as you start trying to slow down and steer the ball, that's when you get the disasters. So, keep your speed up. Guys, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a, of a briefer show today. So, that, that's it. Thanks, you. Uh, thanks, thanks, you. Thanks, you. So, uh, thanks, Monty. And thanks, guys, for watching. All right. Bye.